My neighbor's 2019 iMac is very slow and has a hard time running any programs. These neighbors are some of the best people, so I want to help them out by installing new RAM and hard drive, but I've never installed on a 2019 iMac, so I'm going to have to figure that out. In order to get the right RAM and hard drive, I need to look at my system info by clicking Apple and About This Mac. This is a 2019 iMac with only 8 gigs of RAM, and it's using an older SATA connective drive, not the M.2. It's also important to note that there's only two memory slots for RAM, not four. With that info, I can get all the right parts, and now I'm going to create a USB boot drive for Mac OS. This official Apple website gives me the instructions on how to create a USB boot drive so that I can do a clean install of Mac OS on the new hard drive. I'm going to download a copy of Mac OS Ventura directly from Apple so I know it's clean from any viruses. The file was pretty large, so it did take about 15 minutes to download. Once it downloads, I'm going to double click it, and it will move to my Applications folder. There's now a file that says install macOS Ventura, but don't click on it. Instead, plug in a USB thumb drive that has at least 16 gigs and is USB 3.0. I'm now going to open up Disk Utility so I can use it to install macOS on the thumb drive. I'm going to click on the thumb drive and then click Erase in the top right corner and give it a name of Ventura 13.5. Now I'm going to choose the format macOS Extended Journal or Apple APFS if it's available, and I want the scheme to be set as master boot record. I'm erasing and formatting the thumb drive so that only macOS Ventura will be installed on it. Now that that's erased and formatted, I'm going to open up the terminal so I can make a bootable copy of macOS Ventura on the thumb drive. With the terminal open, I'm going to go back into the Applications folder, right-click Install macOS Ventura, then click Show Package Contents. Click on Contents, then Resources. Then I'm going to go back to the terminal and type sudo or sudo. Sudo stands for Super User Do, which gives me permissions to make changes on my computer or USB drive. Once I type sudo, I'm going to drag and drop the create install media file into the terminal. After that, I'm going to type dash dash volume. Then I'm going to drag and drop the USB icon into the terminal. After that, I'm going to press return, then enter my password, and finally hit the letter Y. At this point, you might be wondering what's going on, but what we did is set up the computer to run off the USB stick. When I install the new hard drive, it's going to be completely blank and won't have Mac OS on it, so the computer won't know what to do when it turns on. However, the computer will now boot off the USB stick and will be able to install Mac OS Ventura from the USB stick to the new hard drive. We now have the bootable USB drive, so now let's turn off the computer and install the RAM and hard drive. With the iMac powered off, I'm going to unplug it and let it sit for about 20 minutes to drain any electrical charge. Then I'm going to clean off the area so dust doesn't get inside the computer. With this heat gun, I'm going to go around the outside to loosen the adhesive holding down the LCD screen. I'm going to use this special tool to cut through any adhesive sticking to the back of the glass. If you get a lot of resistance cutting through the adhesive tape, just use the heat gun and then try again. With the adhesive cut, I'm going to use suction cups to lift up on the glass. As I tried to lift this off, there was quite a bit of resistance in the left-hand corner, so I went around the outside edge a second time to cut the adhesive tape. When I lifted off the glass, I found that there was two cables attached to the LCD panel. The first one just pulls out, but the second has a latch that needs to be removed. With the two cables detached, I can lift up the screen and remove any remaining adhesive tape. With the tape removed, the screen comes right out, and I'm going to set it aside carefully so it doesn't get damaged. With the internals exposed, I found the hard drive, but before I dig for the RAM, I'm going to take a couple pictures so I know how to put it all back together. To take this apart, I'm going to be using several different tools, and I'll have a link to them in the comments section of this video. To get started, I'm going to remove these five screws holding down this metal bracket. I quickly found out that a lot of these screws are different sizes, so it's important to keep them organized, and I like to use these magnetic rubber mats that I'll also have linked below. The five screws are out, so I'm going to remove this metal bracket, but I was very careful not to let it bend, especially because it kept getting caught on the power supply underneath. Next, I'm going to remove the three screws holding down the fan, and I'm also going to remove the power cable attached to the motherboard.
The screws and cable are detached so the fan comes right out, but it's also very dirty so I'm going to make sure to clean it later. Next up is the left speaker and it's held down by these two screws. There are two cables attached to the speaker so I need to remove them before I lift it out. To disconnect the larger cable, I need to pinch the connection, otherwise it could break off if I pull on it. This cable was taped to another cable, so I'm going to carefully remove the tape, then I'll be able to completely pull out the speaker. Next up is taking out the hard drive that's held down by these four screws. I'm going to set aside these two brackets, then I'll detach the SATA cable connected to the hard drive. Later I'm going to show you how to still use the hard drive, so make sure you don't throw it away. I now need to remove the power supply, but I'm going to be very careful not to touch any of the soldered joints on the back, otherwise I could get shocked or damage the iMac. I removed this one cable that was exposed on the top, but when I tried to lift out the power supply board, I found that there was two cables attached underneath. It took me a minute to figure out that to remove these cables, I have to pinch down an alligator clip, otherwise they won't come out. These alligator clips need to be pressed down on the back to open up. The power supply is out, so now I'm going to remove this single screw on the hard drive stand, then I'll remove the right side speaker. The right side speaker is very similar to the left speaker because it has two screws holding it down, and also that same connection that needs to be pinched to be removed. The difference on the right speaker is on this outer edge is the antenna for the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connections. I need to slide the wires out of the holding channel, then I'll disconnect them from the motherboard. To disconnect the antenna, I need to remove the two T5 screws and the metal plate. Once they're removed, I'm going to use a plastic spudger to slide underneath the end of the antenna and twist to disconnect them. Now I'm going to pop up this latch so I can disconnect the camera from the motherboard. There's two more ribbon cables that are connected to the motherboard. For the square one, I just twist my spudger and it will pop right out. But the second one has a tiny holding latch that needs to be lifted up before I can slide out the ribbon cable. I'm now going to remove these four screws, but note that the one closest to the Apple symbol has a tamper resistant sticker on it that you'll first need to punch her through before you can unscrew it. Next I'll remove the four screws holding down this vent. The final piece holding down the motherboard is this tape, so I'm going to peel it back, then I'll be able to carefully lift out the motherboard. At this point I was a little worried because I couldn't find the RAM, then I realized it's underneath this graded metal cover. I can now set aside the iMac frame so I can work on replacing the RAM. The two RAM slots are underneath this metal cover and are held in place by four screws. These screws are different than other screws we've taken out so far, so friendly reminder to make sure you're keeping everything organized. Once I remove the protective cover, I can now replace the old RAM. To eject the old RAM, I press outward on the metal mounts and they'll slide right out. When I clip those in, I now have 16 gigs of RAM for my iMac. The older iMac models used to have RAM on the back of the computer that was really easy to upgrade, so it's too bad that Apple made it so difficult to upgrade on these later versions. As I started to put everything back together, I realized the iMac was covered in dust, so I took it outside and grabbed my portable air gun to clean it out. After I got that done, it's so much cleaner, and it's ready to be put back together. When I went to put back the motherboard, I found that there's two little stubs that need to align to the notches in the Apple frame. When those notches are aligned, the motherboard will fit right into place. When you're putting in the motherboard, be careful that you don't cover up or damage the two ribbon cables on the top. Now I'm just going to go in reverse order and try to put everything back together the way I found it. The Wi-Fi antenna cables are fairly rigid, so they naturally fall into place, 
but be careful when you snap them back to the motherboard that the circle ends are lined up perfectly, otherwise they could be damaged when you push down on them. Make sure to push the antenna and the channel on the side of the speaker, otherwise they could get pinched when you put on the LCD screen. The power supply was probably the most difficult thing to put back together. I put in the smallest clip first, then the one on the side, and I had to use quite a bit of pressure to get the larger side cable to lock into place. I had to make sure that none of the cables were being pinched, then I was able to lock it down with the two screws. Also a reminder to be careful not to touch the components on the back of the power supply, otherwise you could short something out. We upgraded the RAM, and now we're ready to upgrade to the solid state drive. Upgrading to a solid state drive from an old hard drive is one of the best things you can do to make your computer run faster. This solid state drive was slightly smaller than the old hard drive, but it will fit just fine. The two longer screws hold down the front support brackets, and the other long screw goes in the hole closest to the Apple symbol. And with that, I now have a new solid state drive for my iMac. We're almost done, so the next step is to put on the left speaker and the fan. When I put on the cooling fan, I was careful not to let the wire get stuck underneath the slot for the screw, so that when I tighten the screw, it doesn't get damaged. For whatever reason, this connection was a little bit harder to put together, and I had to use a little bit more pressure to snap it in place. The last piece to screw down is the bracket for the LCD screen, and it's held in place by the five screws that we first started with. Once the brackets tighten down, I need to go around the outside and remove any old adhesive tape. I need to put on some new tape, and I have these adhesive kits linked below, and they're really easy to put on if you line them to the screws. They're also marked with numbers to help you know where to put them. Once all the adhesive tape is installed, I'm going to go back and pull off all the plastic covers. With that done, I'm now ready to install the LCD screen. I'm going to wipe off any dust or dirt, then carefully align it to the iMac frame. Before I drop the screen in place, I need to connect the two cables. When they're connected, I can press the screen in place, then carefully go around the outside with a rag to lock the adhesive tape to the screen. After I clean off the screen, I'm going to set the iMac face down on a towel, then I'll let it sit for a few hours to let the tape bond to the iMac. It also happened to be after midnight, so I decided I would finish the repair the next day. After I plug in the USB drive and the power, I'm going to hit Command R, then power up the iMac. Holding Command R will allow us to boot off the USB drive that we set up earlier. A menu will pop up and I'm going to select Install macOS Ventura, then I'll hit Continue, then I'll be asked where I want to install macOS Ventura, and I'm going to select the new solid state drive. After about 20 minutes, I'm going to be taken to the startup screen, and I now have a clean version of macOS Ventura installed for my USB drive. When you get to this screen, I recommend that you skip the Migration Assistant, and that's because we still have the old hard drive that we can connect and transfer files individually. You can sign in with your Apple ID, but I recommend you skip installing from a backup. When the computer restarts, you're going to have a clean version of Mac OS Sierra. Then I'm going to go to Apple about this Mac and verify the RAM and hard drive are working correctly. Everything's working great, so I'm going to get my old hard drive and put it in this enclosure that I can connect to my iMac and transfer all my photos and files. The reason I skipped the backup is because I didn't want to reinstall any bad programs that were causing the computer to run slowly like before. Because of that enclosure, I was able to transfer all the old files that I needed. And now this iMac is bug free, has a faster hard drive and RAM, and is running like new. Hopefully this tutorial helped you so you can go out and help someone else, because that's what it's all about. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.